a very good morning class plus 2 c yes beta we were doing this poem on jennifer tigers written by adrian rich fine i already gave you the introduction of adrian rich american poetess uh, and uh, feminist also feminist who writes for the uh, you can say fundamental rights of a woman to enjoy freedom uh, and uh, a, ma a male person can also be feminist fine so i told you already yeah so uh, let's discuss the themes once again B basically it is based on constraints of married life and control of patriarchy but there are sub themes also fine so let me discuss the themes once again with you all then i will share the screen okay so the basic theme of this poem is constraints of married life restrictions clear yeah. So uh, in this aunt, Jennifer is actually one character to whom poetess Adrian Rich is addressing. Fine, she has, you know, mentioned that aunt Jennifer is weaving a pattern uh, on a piece of cloth. She is uh, doing embroidery. And what is the pattern of that embroidery? Actually, she has weaved a pattern of jumping and prancing tigers. Fine. And the lady who herself uh, is not having freedom in her life, Aunt Jennifer, who is not at all happy in her married life, who is oppressed, suppressed. Fine, she is weaving that pattern. It means uh, she lacks freedom in her life and she's weaving that pattern because she also wants that sort of freedom in her life, right? So, you know, actually this is how you went out your feelings in one of the arts. See, very late joining. Already five minutes. Ho chuke hai, beta. I won't be repeating it again and again. Yes. Clear? So, theme of this poem, uh, restrictions of the married life, constraints of married life, control of patriarchy. Now, you can see I have written in the bracket male dominance. Patriarchal society. You, you must know this word whenever we do this poem patriarchal society and control of patriarchy one and same thing so patriarchal society is that in which male dominance is still prevailing fine then we call it patriarchy or patriarchal society okay then it is obviously if she is not having equal freedom it is the case of gender discrimination also clear then uh, one of the sub themes is respecting individuality. We are living in a society where where we should, you know, consider everyone equal. You might have heard the word chairman. Why the word chairman? Now you know that the word has been changed. Now they call it chairperson. This is one good sign that we are heading towards equality. But still, many things are to be yet to be done for equality by changing the designations only will not do by providing equal opportunities uh, we can do so fine so we need to respect individuality of a person no matter the gender is we should not see that okay this person is male we should do this this person is female no we should treat every person as single human being fine so one should respect one's individuality then need to provide liberty to women also you can see the quote i have written on the board today is Without equality, there cannot be liberty. So if we want, what do, you, what do you mean by liberty? What do you mean by the word liberty, anyone? Quick responses, jaldi se. Yes, Manshika, jaldi bitaiye. What is liberty? Free. Yes, please. I'm free. Free from mind. No restrictions. Okay, freedom actually. Yes, free. So uh, this word means freedom. Yes, web, exactly. Liberty is freedom. Fine, when you are, uh, you know, we say that liberal views should be there. So liberty means freedom. Okay, so need to provide liberty to women. We should, you know, uh, last day we were discussing about and uh, that equality in, uh, in our homes only, but we see in our neighborhood, sometimes in our own families, Sometimes in the relatives, we see that discrimination is still prevailing. Fine. So we need to provide some liberty to women and we need to respect individuality of women and men uh, also. Fine. But this poem focuses mainly on 
constraints and uh, um, you can say there are a lot of marital responsibilities which we expect from the women but we do not expect from the men fine there is these days i have seen one ad of like i guess one of the diapers they are promoting on a television but the ad was very uh, the message was very good these days you know so social message giving ads are in uh, you can say fashion so one of the like whenever it is supposed to do any work of the child of the toddler of the baby we start you know uh, all the elderly people they start looking at the mother but it shouldn't be there you know it should be equal responsibility of father and mother but we have you know fixed the things okay these things uh, are meant to be done by the women only these things are meant to be done by the male members only now what do you mean by according to me uh, what will be the you can say the uh, equality scenario if we think that only male members should be the bread earners means why they should always go out and work hard uh, for uh, you can say 12 hours in a day or 8 hours in a day and women in the society women uh, in our uh, homes they're sitting at home they are supposed to sit at home no women should think that e even i can earn these days women should think that okay if my husband is working my brother is working my father is working i should also work so that is equality similarly uh, you can say women in the society uh, should think equally that they can be the bread earners they can also work and they can also pay uh, whatever uh, expenses are in the family similarly uh, male members should also think that if we uh, you know my wife my sister my mother they are working fine and they are doing the household chores also why can't i if uh, my sister can do work in kitchen can't i prepare tea for everyone so we have actually uh, you know uh, demarcations are set by society only so that shouldn't be there equality should be prevailing only then we can say that equality is there otherwise gender discrimination in both the cases not in females i'm only joking about okay so this poem basically uh is going to uh, talk about aunt jennifer one of the characters fine but aunt jennifer is actually representing all the women of the society clear all the women who are facing uh, a lot of troubles in their marital lives a lot of marital responsibilities they do not they, they are suffocating in their relationships clear and then please note down these two words uh, already we have discussed first stanza and word meanings of first stanzas also you wrote yesterday only so second stanza i will be repeating first on, also in brief but you please note down fluttering means to move quickly the next word is ordeals ordeals in this context okay in the context of this poem it means bitter and harsh experiences of aunt jennifer bitter and harsh experiences okay so these are the two let me share the screen with you all now first stanza i will repeat again can you see the screen beta is it visible to all yes so very first stanza aunt jennifer tigers prance across a screen bright topaz denizens of a world of green they do not fear the men beneath the tree they pace in sleek chivalric certainty those who were uh, not present yesterday please note down the word meanings also prance means uh, to jump from uh, one place to another place jumping or moving by taking bigger steps that is known as prance fine topaz means bright yellow color bright is written already topaz is yellow color denizens means residents or inhabitants of a place residents okay world of green here stands for forest fine beneath means under pace pace here stands for the movement okay movement then we have sleek sleek means elegant and chivalric means courageous and brave okay so in first stanza adrian rich poetess says that that aunt jennifer is weaving a pattern she's making one embroidery on a piece of cloth and that pattern is of uh, prancing tigers jumping tigers fine and moving here and there across a screen means they are jumping freely here and there 
bright they are the color of the tigers is bright yellow and they are residents of forest fine and the background of the jumping forest uh, sorry jumping uh, uh, tigers is uh, uh, green forests okay green here representing forests only clear so she is uh, weaving a beautiful pattern of embroidery on a piece of cloth and what is the pattern that bright colored bright yellow color tigers are prancing and jumping and uh, at the background we can see the forest okay because they are residents they are considered the residents of forest only so they do not fear and what are the traits of those tigers i already uh, asked you and you people told me that yes ma'am tigers when we talk about tigers many traits are associated like bravery courageousness confidence fine so in the last two lines of the first stanza poetess is saying that they are not at all afraid of men beneath the tree means they are not scared of presence of anyone because tigers are known to be ferocious tigers are considered brave they are not at all afraid of anyone and they pace they pace means they move they move in very elegant manner sleek means elegant fine they move in very elegant way in a chivalric way means very brave and courageous certainty means confidence fine the gait g a t e gait hota hai the way one walks okay so the movement of the tigers is very brave very confident and elegant fine so this is what poetess adrian rich says in very first stanza okay let's continue the second stanza now uh, beta please be vigilant because i'm going to ask you only Aunt Jennifer's tigers, uh, sorry, Aunt Jennifer's fingers, fluttering through her wool, find even the ivory needle hard to pull. The massive weight of Uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon Aunt Jennifer's hand. Beautiful lines. Please double underline the last two lines. Very important in boards. You can see any of the lines from this poem. Definitely find the massive weight. and jennifer's hand the very uh, you can say uh, lines carrying the deeper meaning so poet is saying in in second stanza that aunt jennifer's because you know that she is weaving a pattern of tigers on a piece of cloth and while doing so her fingers are fluttering fine it, fingers are moving quickly in regular succession her fingers are moving quickly fine through her wool and she she is weaving that pattern with the help of wool only fine she is making that pattern uh, of tigers jumping across the screen and uh, with the help of this uh, material wool find even the ivory needle hard to pull see now poet is saying that it is very difficult for aunt jennifer even to get hold of the very light weight needle needle is used to weave the pattern you know that fine and ivory is you can say silver colored fine ivory here stand for that silver color of the needle so even the ivory needle hard to pull means you know when you are suppressed in the burden when you are not at all happy mentally fine then even it will be difficult for you to carry the weight of a needle but when you are so happy in your life and you are contented you are leading very beautiful life even the you can say heaviest of the burdens you will feel very light so this is uh, human psychology when you are not happy in your life when you are suffocated it is difficult for you to do any core any work so they are saying because she is not at all happy in her married life she is suppressed she is suffocated and that's why it is very difficult for her to move to you know pull even the very light weight needle the massive weight of uncle's wedding band why there is burden on her actually massive means huge big underline the word massive massive means big and huge massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon aunt jennifer's hand they are saying actually now what is wedding band you know that in many of the countries in foreign countries or in our in our country also exchanging the uh, sorry exchanging the rings mean the uh, you are getting married fine so wedding band here stands for that ring wedding ring excuse me 
fine so uh, wedding band here stands for that exchanging wedding rings it means you are married okay so they are saying that the weight of wedding band beta is not that much but the responsibilities which come along with the wedding band they are too heavy for you to manage so for most of the people exchanging the rings starting new life you know they have the kind of uh, whatever we see in the movies fine that that kind of thing but life is not bed of roses along with roses come thorns also fine a lot of responsibilities are there a lot of but if your responsibilities are divided equally between men and women then there will be no problem but when one side uh, you can say either of the sides i'm saying uh, whether it is um, male part or the female person are uh, you can say suffocating in the relation both conditions are bad so in this case aunt jennifer is the sufferer massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits heavily upon aunt jennifer's hand means the huge burden of responsibilities come along with wedding band fine uncle is aunt jennifer's husband here sits heavily upon aunt jennifer's hand means along with that wedding band she was also uh, you can say caught in the vicious circle of responsibilities in the vicious circle of a lot of expectations suppression of her life okay so is it clear to you all please send me your thumbs up jaldi se second stanza is clear then i'll continue the third one then it's your turn to participate jaldi se bataiye is it clear any doubt chaliye last stanza when aunt is dead her terrified hands will lie still ringed with the ordeals she was mastered by the tigers in the panel that she made will go on prancing proud and unafraid will go on prancing proud and unafraid now poet is taking this incident of one family to larger scale she knows one aunt jennifer and her husband fine she is tortured by her husband she is not happy in her married life aunt jennifer but now poetess adrian rich is taking this to another level she is saying even when aunt jennifer will be dead her terrified hands uh, will still be ringed with the ordeals means they are you can say that wedding band is sign is re reflecting the bitter and harsh experiences fine bitter and harsh experiences which she had in her marital life clear so the massive weight of uncle's wedding band sits uh, sorry uh, the tigers in the panel that she made and she carved a beautiful pattern of tigers they will keep on jumping they will keep on prancing proud and unafraid not getting scared by anyone actually these tigers are representing patriarchal society here if even if aunt jennifer is dead male dominance will keep on prevailing when one aunt jennifer is dead there are other n number of women in the society who will still be suffocating in their relationship who will still be tortured by their husbands or the male members of their families fine so if one aunt jennifer is dead even then even then this this is not the end of suppression this is not the end of male dominance male dominance will keep on preva prevailing patriarchal society will still be existing fine she will still be ringed with the ordeals bitter experiences she was mastered by when she was alive she was being mastered by her husband and her terrified hand see they have explained hands by using this adjective terrified when she was so scared in that relationship she was not able to express her emotions she had very bad ordeals bad experiences she was mastered by when she was alive even after her death there will be no end to the doomsday there will be no end to the harsh realities of the life there will be other women who will keep on suffering male dominance will keep on prevailing patriarchal society will be in existence and 
that pattern of tigers she weaved they will keep on jumping proud and unafraid now two meanings are there of the tigers one is that tigers are representing patriarchal society male dominance that they are free uh, they are confident they have more rights as compared to women but second meaning of that pattern which she weaved why did she chose uh, why did she choose sorry why did she choose the pattern of tigers only why not any other animal because tigers are considered free spirited animals right and even uh, aunt jennifer was you know she wanted to get that kind of freedom just like tiger she wanted to move freely she wanted to have her say in life she wanted to relish each and every moment but she was suffocated she was not at all happy she was subjugated fine or suppressed in the relationship so in marital responsibilities so she wants freedom like tigers that's why she weaved the pattern of tigers only and not any other animal is that clear to you all yes beta jaldi se send me thumbs up what about others jaldi se those who are not sending thumbs up they are absent for me then yes yes rasika beta you raised hand okay yes suhani uh, please explain second stanza um, in the second stanza the poet is saying that aunt jennifer while weaving through a uh, while weaving the pattern of a tiger her hands they are moving very quickly through the wool but it's very difficult for her to get the hold of the very light ivory needle because she has been suppressed with a uh, burden and that's why it's very difficult for her and the massive weight of uncle's wedding man means she is married and uh, that wedding band is not much but the responsibilities which come along with that they are a burden she has been caught in a vicious circle and now she has been uh, suppressed that's very good so uh, now hansika please explain third stanza beta hansika are you there when aunt is dead what will happen then rana gurjeet beta please explain third stanza yes ma'am when yes we that she had faced so many ordeals in her life she uh, the tigers that she made on the panel will will prance and will uh, symbolize the freedom that she always begged for in her life mean even after her death she will not be able to free herself so in the last stanza let me explain again if any doubt is there in the last stanza poet says that even after her death she will not be able to get rid of those responsibilities because that massive weight of band is a symbol of harsh and bitter experiences of her life fine and even after her death she will not be able to get rid of these things because there are other aunt jennifers there are other women in the society who will still be facing the same stigma who will still be facing the same condition like aunt jennifers fine then the tigers in the panel so what will happen if many women in the society will fe- will face uh, gender discrimination inequality and when their freedom will be snatched from them they will be given burden and responsibilities in the name of wedding band what will happen then tigers in the panel means those tigers the patriarchal society will keep on having the upper hand in the society 
they will keep on showing their worth their supremacy is this is the word fine they will keep on showing their supremacy in the society patriarchy will keep on prevailing so very important fine this patriarchy word patriarchal society male dominance and male chauvinism also if you get the word chauvinism that also means the same fine that when male dominance is prevailing clear chauvinism word c h a u v i n i s m clear so that also means that there is male dominance basically this poem tells us about the condition of women in our society no doubt the scenario is changing day by day but still there are a lot of things which needs to be done okay any doubt to anyone beta we will discuss literary devices now no doubt is there no doubt is there beta literary devices please use uh, please note down only uh, beta 3 4 minutes are there so please you need to note down which poetic device is used let me tell you see see your books beta in the very first stanza when uh, in third line they do not fear in fourth line they pace in sleek shoe so in this case yes when uh, some words are repeated in the beginning of the line so you know what is the device of repetition first when some word is being repeated again and again in the stanza or in the poem that is called the device of literary device of repetition but if some words are repeated in the beginning of the stanza in the very first line in the second line or in the third line also or means minimum two maximum uh 2 3 4 fine so when words are repeated like in third and fourth line third line also starts with the word they this device is called anaphora please note down a n a p h o r a a n a p h o r a anaphora is a literary device in which the beginning words of stanzas are repeated so here it is the example of they do not fear they pace in this they word is repeated in the beginning fine in the beginning if it is repeated anaphora but if in between the words are being repeated beech mein kahin kahin pe repeat hue ho then that is called the device of repetition okay then uh next is uh see beta you tell me now Uh, i am giving you the hint next device is alliteration you tell me where it is used alliteration literary device alliteration is used in this poem what is alliteration let me tell you again alliteration is repetition of the consonant sound if i say beaded bubble bubbling in the bubble bath suppose any word i uh, speak so b sound is repeated here that is example of alliteration yes suhani has uh, given the answer in the chat box any other any other you should know only one child has given the answer yes anmol nagwal has also given very good uh exactly fingers fluttering okay so suhani and anmol both have given the correct answer uh example of alliteration is fingers fluttering okay f sound is repeated please underline in second stanza fingers fluttering through her wool then in the first stanza beta please see third device used is metaphor m e t a p h o r metaphor what is metaphor when direct comparison is made you know simile is that device in which comparison is made by using as or like but when as or like are not used but direct comparison is made then that is called as metaphor fine direct comparison rather than using like or as so where metaphor is used please tell me
ये सुखमन ज्योत करेक्ट आंसर ब्राइट टॉपाज एक्चुअली दे हैव यूज दिस वर्ड टॉपाज दैट इज येलो कलर for uh, tigers rather than saying they are yellow in color so they are directly comparing that color with their uh, tiger's color so bright topaz is the example of metaphor okay then beta one more alliteration is used here in the last stanza alliteration same is used in last stanza bell ho chuki jaldi se bata do in last stanza alliteration is used what is the answer Suhani, prancing proud. Yes, beta. Correct answer. P sound is repeated here. Prancing proud is the correct answer. So please, tomorrow we will do question answers of and stanza wise questions also. Okay. Have a nice day. And beta, we are supposed to do writing skill, a uh, job application, which is very important, in which you will get to learn about so many other careers also. So please keep attending English lecture. Do not hesitate in. learning the things okay have a nice day